still talking about short-term regulation, but there is some endocrine involvement in this. Um, the first one to discuss is from the adrenal medulla. So what am I talking about? Norpep, norpep, norepinephrine and epinephrine from the adrenal medulla. This is technically endocrine because it's in the bloodstream, but the stimulus for this is going to be the same as the stimulus for the, our sympathetic nervous system. This is a sympathetic nervous system response, decreased baroreceptor firing or, or, or um, high carbon dioxide would cause norepinephrine and epinephrine release from the adrenal medulla having the same effects that um, it has when it synapses directly onto the target tissue, vasoconstriction, um, and increased heart rate, increased contractility. Mechanisms for those are the same as sympathetic innervation of the heart and vessels. Next, um, oh, and this is your lovely diagram to remind you of that anatomy, right? Sympathetic and then part of the sympathetic, but the adrenal specific. Second, renin angiotensin. Renin, um, I believe I mentioned angiot angiotensin in that first video, but not renin. Renin is gonna be released from the kidneys. This is also gonna be part of the long-term response to regulate blood volume, but this is also um, has short-term effects as well. So low blood pressure is going to trigger this and this renin is an enzyme that triggers the production of angiotensin. Angiotensin is going to be a vaso, what do you think? Oh, okay, low blood pressure, vasoconstriction. It will also have some long-term effects we'll come back to. But right now we're doing short-term. Vasoconstriction is a short-term thing. Changing blood volume is not. Next one, atrial natriuretic peptide. This is what my picture here refers to. This is a hormone that's actually released from the atria of the heart. How cool is that? The atria stretch. So high MAP is going to stretch the atria. Can you imagine that happening? High blood flowing into that atria and cause the release of ANP. What do you think the effects of this are gonna be? Vasodilation. This is our basically our one hormone that responds to high blood pressure. It's also going to inhibit aldosterone. So this is going to red negative inhibit that. Let's diagram the endocrine response to high blood pressure. This is the only um, main, main example we'll see of a response to high blood pressure. Um, besides, I guess you, you could have high blood pressure increase baroreceptor firing to just target the parasympathetic nervous system to decrease heart rate. Okay, so this is, but this is AMP. High blood pressure, that is going to target cardiac myocytes in the atria, the cells in there. AMP is going to do what? Atrial natriuretic peptide. This is a inhibitor, that's what this little dashed line means. These are the organs, but this is what I actually already told you. So I told you already, it is going to um, inhibit aldosterone. Aldosterone is actually produced in the adrenal cortex. It's a mineral corticoid. Um, it's produced along with steroid hormones in the adrenal cortex. So I just have this here as you know, tying things together. Blood vessels are what dilate the tunica media specifically, right? This one is the one that is a long-term response. I will not ask you about this one. Um, there's plenty of things we're going to see where the, um, we'll look at the, how the kidney is altered due to low blood pressure to alter fluid volume. Um, so I probably, I won't, I'll, I'll focus on A and P as short term, which are these two up here. 
Um, the idea that kidney alters fluid volume, that's going to be a large response that we'll talk about less next with some other hormones. But it should make sense to you, salt and water loss is going to correspond, be the response to high blood pressure.